You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Welcome to All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. As always, I'm joined by my guy, JC. Joe, how are you doing, boss? Yes, big man. I'm dangerously well. How are you? Dangerously well, mate. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what? You're dangerously well. I'm, I'm surviving, Joe. I mean, you look... Okay. Every week, you look more and more like a Hollywood superstar. I know. I'm coming home, t- I'm coming home tomorrow, big man. Um... I've had a great time. I was lucky to get away. I see it every week. I'm 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 back there in in the cold with you next week, mate. Joe, Hopefully we'll have a better connection. Joe with the glow. That's getting up now. <laughs> <laughs> um, today, Joe, we've got a great great lineup. We're going to be talking thrashings after that ridiculous nine 0 between Man United and Southampton. We're going to talk about did Ronaldinho mean to lod David Seaman in the 2002 World Cup and an inside story on one of the greatest goals ever scored in the Premier League. And to talk about that, we need to bring in an absolute legend of the game. Someone I love. He's a cracking lad. They call him Tricky Trevor Sinclair. Boom! Trev, how you doing, boss? Tom, brilliant to, it's brilliant to be here. And I, I actually have to say, it just reminds me of living in Essex, listening to you two. And it brings back <laughs> happy memories. <laughs> Trev. Where about Essex did you live when you lived there, Trev? I was in Epping. I loved it. I went to Chigwell first and we got burgled. Both my cars got nicked. <laughs> yeah, standard, standard procedure. <laughs> when you're at West Ham together, how was it together? Like, because I mean, for me as a West Ham fan, like it's such a bittersweet memory of you two because it was one of the best teams I've ever seen play when you play together. But obviously, one of the most, almost like the harshest of times that 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 season, the relegation. You know what? What an amazing team it was. I mean, what was what was first thing for you two? You playing together. Yeah, how did you both get on as playing together? It was, it was. Uh, listen, we, we, I was very fortunate when I was at West Ham because not only Joe but Michael Carrick, Defoe. There were so many amazing youngsters. Even Frank and Rio, you know, were in and around that same period of time. And um, it, you just seen the talent, and you could see they were going to be successful. A lot of them, Joe included, ended up being like you know icons of our game. Um, in the in the noughties and and did superbly well won everything in the game. But when you see him come in as a youngster, it's not so much the talent; it's the work ethic and the way they, they conduct conduct themselves. Um, and to be fair, it probably made me become a bit more professional as well because I've obviously enjoyed the um, era before when Joel came through, where it was a lot more socialising, going out on the on the lash with the boys and that. And then you feel a little bit like I've got a responsibility to to make sure I train well. Uh, and someone for the boys, the young boys coming through to look up to. So it probably helped me become more professional and grow up a little bit. It's because it's, it's a weird one to, to talk about that that time at West Ham for you, like to you both. It's like because I remember like you know we finished set seventh in two thousand and two, and sort of coming into two thousand and three, you got the likes of Joe, you got Michael Carrick, you got these guys coming through, Jermaine, yourself, Trev, sort of the older pros. I, I remember two thousand and three thinking, oh, we're gonna. We're going to absolutely tear it up this year. When you look back at that time and, and us getting relegated, what do you think was the principal reason that, that that happened? Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. I think we didn't start well. Yeah. And um, I think that was one of the main reasons for that for me personally was coming off the back of that World Cup, you're on such a high. And, and you, you know, it was, for me, it was successful because at the end of the day, I was a 24th man out of a 23-man squad and I ended up playing four yeah. games in the World Cup. So you come back, I think I only had two weeks off. I went to the South of France, come back, thought I want to get going again. I'm buzzing, like I love football, but mentally, I didn't realise how drained I was. And it took me a while personally to get going. I think that could have applied to the other lads, Joe and, and Jamo, who were in the squad as well. Uh, but not only that, I think Glenn Roder was our manager then. He came in, he had some new ideas and I just don't think it worked well. We loved him as a coach, but when he made that step up to becoming manager of West Ham, he really struggled. And then we, we found out that Glenn got ill. He, he had, a, I think he had a, a, a brain tumour. So he got taken out of the equation. And then I think when Trevor Brooking came in just after Christmas, we got on a run. And, you know, we, we got 42 points, um, Tom, yeah, yeah. and went down. But I think if we could have started anything like when when Trevor Brooking came in, I think we would have been fine and we probably would have been very safe. Um, it's just a combination of too many things. It was a real disappointment for me, not to, not just to get relegated, but not to be able to stay at the... I say not be able to stay at the club. I could have stayed at the club, but they 
got a, got a, an offer from Manchester City, and that would have been my kind of last opportunity to play for the club that I supported as a kid. So. It was probably the only club I would have left West Ham to go to in that situation. But I really wanted to stay. You know, as soon as the, the final whistle went and I knew we were relegated, I really wanted to stay and say, right, I'm here. I want to get this club back into the Premier League. It was like the, so many little things kept going wrong during the season. I, f- I felt we was we was left short at the start of the season, you know, where we only had Freddie, Paolo uh, and Jermaine as forwards. And we played a 4-4-2. And then... Um, you know, Glenn was telling me he, he, he was trying to get Didier Drogba. What a signing that would have been through the door. Do you know, like, like genuine, uh, the club didn't want to pay the money or whatever it was. And then, and then he wanted Les at the start of the season as backup. And he didn't get him till January. And all these little things add up. And we ended up going, uh, I think, two or two months where we didn't have a centre forward. And we played with Ian Pearce, who He was a fantastic player for West Ham and a great lad um, up front. And, and Trev... Played up front, he'd done a good job, but then we missed him in the midfield because of what he gave. And then um, it just seemed to be, we'd lose, like you said, we, there was a little hangover of players and it just, everything went wrong. But we still got 42 points, which would probably get you closer to Europe nowadays than getting relegated. It was a freak season. We was exciting to watch. We got, we got our arses spanked a couple of times because we were so open. But we had so many good players. When it worked, we it, it worked really well. And you you go back to like thinking about West Ham fans, why they they loved that team, why they resonated with that team was because you sort of know through them twenty years you, we wasn't going to threaten the league. So you go to Upton Park and they wanted to be entertained and they wanted to watch, and that they certainly was. You know, Paolo, Trevor, great players, Harry on the sidelines, you know, you felt like anybody could turn up at West Ham and play at that time. You know, it was, anything was possible. So I love that team and it broke my heart the day we got relegated because it, you know, it really did. It took me, it took me weeks, weeks to just even just let it just filter in. Do you know what I mean? It was horrible time and uh, mm. yeah, it broke up and, and yeah. That was the beginning and the end as well for that squad, wasn't it? Yeah, the, yeah. The yeah. that were on decent dull ended up getting sold and then it was almost like a rebuilding time for West Ham. I mean, you're talking about relegations and, and obviously, you know, both of you going down that season. And it, I mean, it must be, it's, it's, it's got to be the hardest thing in football, right? Leaving the Premier League and it's, it's a tough, tough thing. I mean, when you look at it now and you look at Sheffield United now and being 10 points away and, and sort of in a similar position almost to West Ham. You know, last season they were incredible. They were a joy to watch. Mm. They Tough to beat, and in this season, you know, they're 10 points adrift. Yeah, you know, what do you think they can get out of that? What, what's your thoughts, both of you, on that? Yeah, I think I think the manager's been different class. You know, he's a realist. I think the boys all believe in his methods. And um, I just think they're a little bit underwhelmed and they've not got probably the talent to get out of it. Although they're having a good goal, they've, got, they've had a few wins uh, mm. of recent times, and they've got a bit of momentum. I was at the game at Old Trafford and Everyone stuck to their tasks. They looked like they had energy. Mm. There was a lot of belief about them. But I just think they'll they'll fail just about because they've just not got that bit of quality, especially in forward positions. They they lack goals. But I don't think it'll be a problem for Sheffield United because I think they've not overspent. Um, I think they'll it'll probably go down and then they'll probably bounce back because I think the manager's top draw. And uh, but I do feel it's a lot different. I went I, I went down with QPR. I yeah, that was a, that was yeah, another good side though. Yeah, it wasn't no, it wasn't no Tom because they sold down Peacock who was the centre half and he was like yeah. you know the top man at the back and they sold Les Ferdinand and, and yeah. I actually put a transfer mm. request in because I I could see it coming. They're selling the best yeah. talent and bringing in players. Listen, love love the players that came in, but they weren't the same quality. They didn't offer the same skill set and the same performance. And I knew that we, but I was young at the time and I thought, well, this is the club letting the the fans down and the players. Whereas when it happened at West Ham, it hit me a lot harder because I was the experienced player. I thought we had enough talent to stay up that year. Mm. And because of the bad start we got, we just give ourselves too big a mountain to climb to get ourselves I mean, out is that the same with Sheffield United now, I suppose? that they've, they've started to play well. They've started to pick up some wins. They've started to play a bit. But is it too little? Is it too late now? You're I think it's too late, but I think it's desperation, isn't it? It's pride. You know, mm. yeah. you don't want to be associated with that. And, and listen, Joe you know, what he achieved in the game, he'll still look back at that relegation. It's probably one of the most yeah. disappointing seasons of his life. Yes, yeah, it's the, one of the, it's the hardest, hardest, um, hardest day in my football career, for sure, yeah. that day. Yeah, um, I mean, I've lost cup finals before and that's tough. But that, because especially, I was captain at the time, Tom, as well, mm-hmm. Glenn Gibbs, yeah. and, and I did 
you know, I, I shed tears, not in public, but it g- genuinely hurt me. I remember uh, just, just being in a, a daze for for a few weeks afterwards, you know, because I thought, and, I, and listen, like, it's mad, thing, things go through your head. Like, I didn't want to go back. My mum and dad, I was living with my mum and dad at the time, and I was in uh, Romford, uh, Gideon Park, and I didn't want to go back. I was on holiday, and I was like, right, I need to move out the area. I was looking at houses away from where I was living, wow. like, because I was like, I can't face, like, going to the petrol station, because... Yeah. But, and and I, 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 I talked to Stevie G about it on a much higher level at Liverpool, because being captain of Liverpool is 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 a is a different level Oof. of intensity for yeah. and for a local lad, but like f- I had a fraction of that at that time, and and of the, the the guilt you feel, and um for for for, for the club and, and and fans get on players' backs a lot for for that, and there is some players who are mercenary, but I think the majority of us, Trev, I think it it does hurt, doesn't it? Do you yeah, know what I mean? And you definitely. do you do feel it, and I think that listen, I think that feeling that you was having. I think we all had that. And I think that represented that kind of time at West Ham. There was a relationship between the fans and the players. They yeah. knew we were, like you said earlier, Tom, they knew we weren't going to win the league, but it was that West Ham way, entertain, give everything when you cross that line uh, for the shirt. And, you know, it's an old saying, but, you know, people, if you play for the badge on the front of the shirt, people remember the, the name on the back. And I, there's not a true yeah. word said in my opinion. Yeah. No, no it's, it's a big thing. Well that I, th- I think, I think that's the thing that, you know, I look back at that team and I think, you know, People, people did sort of get in there, but they got stuck in. I mean, the other, you talk about harsh days, and it, the, I look at like, you know, we, we're doing this on a Wednesday night, and yesterday, obviously, it was Man United Southampton. And, and Southampton, let me say, by the way, when we're staying played them this season, I thought they were incredible at the back. With the yeah. game against Liverpool, I thought, well, yeah, it's one of the performances of the season defensively with what they, were, what they had. And then yesterday, I'm like, wow, like 9 0, you know, mm. it's, I mean, I've looked at both of your worst losses. Yeah, uh, both, yeah. <laughs> but, no, no. Well, well, well both, well, yeah, both of you were, I think, there with West Ham, right? Yeah. We had a couple of flashings there with that. Uh, with, but how, as a player, right, that, that, a 9 0, and for some of those guys, that's the second time this has happened, and because they were involved probably in the Leicester game, I imagine. How, how is that? How does that rate as a. How, how do you pick yourself up the next day when you've, when you've been <laughs> hiding like that? Do you remember the Trev? Do you remember the one at, um, in the cup at Old Trafford, the 6 1? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Like, that was brutal because that they took that could have been that could have been ninety nine, yeah, let alone cool, nine. Yeah, you know, and 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 there's your soul searching that goes on at half. Time. I remember half time Gary Breen, honest as the days long as a player, just just like lost, just went, oh, just stood up and went, I'm I'm not cut out for you know this is an Ireland mm-hmm. international that just done was performing at the World Cup, and he's like, he just lost his head. He was like, I'm not good enough at this level. I cost three goals goals today. Uh, and you know you can see the the pain in him because mm. of the it's an embarrassing as a footballer when you get yeah. beat like that and it happens to, to not to say everyone but it happens to most of us ninety nine point nine percent and like Brini was just like I remember just saying just put my arm around him and just think and I was a young so I was like listen don't worry about it, it happens you know blah 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 and it does it just happens and then some days it's the worst it's the loneliest place to be in the world you sur- you could be at Old Trafford in front of seventy five thousand people and you just you just want to uh, something to just Take you know, take you away and just get away. It's horrible. Yeah, I, I'm I'm quite I'm, I'm a bit different because I've you know, you know I played um, quite young um, in the England squad when I went to Little Show. and I'm I'm kind of um, you, you know what they're way better than us, and I'm looking at my teammates. I'm quite harsh because I think yeah. right, I've got a job to do, but then yeah. I look around at my teammates and I think we are we're in <laughs> shit street here. <laughs> and if it happens, I think you know what. I think the, one, one of the games that Glenn brought me off after about 60, 70 minutes, he almost like hung me out to dry, you're not doing your job. But I'm looking, yeah. at, the, I'm looking at the manager's tactics, I'm thinking, he wants us to press, but he wants them to sit deep. I'm not buying into this. So as a, as a manager, and this is yeah. how I coach now, I, I think if you can sell an idea to the players and they all buy into it, you've got a chance. Mm. When he sold the idea to me that we've got a press, but if they get through that press, then we sit deep. There's too, too big a gaps. So mm. I knew it weren't going to, and sometimes we'd talk to each other, wouldn't we, and say, he mm. wants us to press, but half go and then just sit in because we've got no mm. chance because they're passing it too fluidly and all yeah, the rest yeah. of it. Um, so after that game, I was like, I, one, we got smashed. Two, I got yeah. dropped. And I think I got dropped for the next couple of games. I think, all right, I'll just go to the gym. I'll work hard. I'll show you in training by being the best player. And this is when I see players in the, like, the down tools and they think, ah, oh, I want to leave and all this. I think, grow up, man. 
Take yeah. responsibility for that shit yeah. performance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get in the gym, do extra work, do extra training, whatever you need to do to make yeah. your performance good enough. To, so the manager literally goes, we have to play him because he's embarrassing yeah. the lads in training. And that's, yeah. why I, that's how I take it aboard ab- ab- myself to, to change things. But some players do feel sorry for themselves. It's, it's, that's unthinkable now, like, to... to to think that, that you got dropped a couple of times in that season, didn't you? Yeah. By the gaffer. Like, and you think like what you was for us as a player, like, you know, and I think if I'd have been a senior player and, and been able to speak to the gaffer, I'd have gone like, gaffer, come on. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we can't live. Like, Trev was oh, I think he's a fan clearly well, one though. of our best players and he got left, you know, but that's the kind of madness of that season. And I, I think, I, I remember watching that game in a pub. The, the six nil. And, I wish and... I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> we all <laughs> did. <laughs> but it's it's yeah. it's a really weird thing to sit and watch a team being smashed like that yeah. and just realize. I think it, yeah, I've had it. There's been a few of those over the years. I think Joe played another one years later against City mm. actually. Weirdly. Yeah. And I just remember sitting there, just think you sit there and you're like, this is you're so not at the races. Like mm-hmm. genuinely, it makes you go. This is. I don't know if I can even like football anymore now. Because yeah. also, you know, yeah. there's a good chance you'll never yeah. do that. As you'll yeah. never be a West Ham fan sitting there going, "Oh, we smashed so and so nine 0 Do you know what I mean? It's. Mm. I mean, how? Because Joe, you've been on the other side of it. Yeah. Like, but I think it was Wigan. You beat Wigan. Yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. At Chelsea. I've had a couple of. We've we we smashed a few teams at Chelsea every now and then, and it's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, with the flip of the coin in it it's like uh, do you know what annoyed me in them games what annoyed me in them games because as a player I always went and got them the, one of the things was I always re- wanted the ball where any yeah. game anywhere right from a young kid right to my last game and what do you think annoyed me about them games won't be smashing teams and I'm seeing lads doing olays and all that I'm like listen when we was playing Barcelona and Bayern Munich mate you <laughs> was like Phew. The hollow man, Kevin M-I-A. Bacon, yeah. couldn't find him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And now you want to get up and you know, you know there was there was a few of them them, them players about, mate. And that, that sort of so them things were I love them games like every player would. But it's always tinged with a little bit. I'd look at people sometimes in the dressing room afterwards and I think we like can you name any names here, Joe? No, I can't you... name names, big man. Come on, mate. Just, listen. Get them under the bus. Do you yeah. not? I would there's a part of me, right, that would, it sounds really like, but would you not, I'd feel sorry for people, like, if you're giving someone, if you feel, if you're giving someone a hiding that badly, and like, you're sort of six nil up, and you, you're doing our ladies, or like little flick yeah. ups and stuff, I'd feel, I wouldn't be able to look those people in the eye again, like, yeah. as you're leaving the pitch, I'd feel like, yeah. having to walk around going, I'm sorry for that, that just feels like, too That's much. probably why you weren't a footballer, because we're all nasty <laughs> bastards, well, really. I think, yeah, I, I mean, Joe, I, you're I, too I think nice, lack, mate. You're too I think nice. lack of any skills upon the pitch is why. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not a footballer. Don't worry. I'd we'll like listen. if it was like a gentle fucking spirit. <laughs> 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 why, is that, why is that big overweight fella not made it as a footballer? He's just too kind. <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually, on the pitch, he was like Pele. I actually <laughs> think at times, like you said that about where you smashed teams, Joe, and it was like, you know, you'd look at some of your teammates and be like, look yeah. at you giving it all there. You went missing last yeah. week. But yeah. I actually think that's probably why I didn't go on to win anything. I know you need a lot of luck and the right team at the right time and all the right rest of it. But I did actually feel sorry for the opposition when it was like yeah. that. And Just even, as a, nice. even as a coach, nice. even as a coach now, I remember our first game when I set my academy up a few years ago and we played against this, this team and it's, it, this is what usually happened because we like to keep the ball. So you start the game and their coach is like, get after him, get after him. And after about 15 minutes when you're tonking them and you're just passing them to death, their manager goes quiet. But because it was a new team and we'd only been working for a couple of months, a few of our lads started showboating. Yeah. So they came in at the end with one, four, five, no, whatever. And um, they were all like springing the step. I absolutely mullered them. I only, I only ever mullered this team twice. They won everything from that. Yeah. Under 18s team. I only ever mullered them twice. Once was that, and because it was too easy in the end, because we got a lot of academy players at 16 that got released. So we got like a real yeah. nucleus yeah. of good players. And they were playing against players that probably weren't good enough. So we had to move them on into um, men's football quite young. Yeah. yeah. But we put them in under 21 league again. And they started off dodgy because lads were driving in themselves. They had sleeves and they're only 16, yeah. 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then by the end of it, we had to take them out because they were doing that again, taking the mech. Yeah. And they yeah. were going to get kicked because they were against 21 year old university lads where yeah. if you do it too many times, they'll come through it. And at the end of the day, they're going to stop learning because they're going to be injured for three months. But that's, yeah. I actually feel I never liked that part of the game mm. when players are, when you, you're winning four or five nil and then all of a sudden mm. these players start 
coming out and showing a little step over and you know all yeah. this that and the other stick to what you know man don't yeah. change your game and yeah. that's what I like that's what I like as a coach with my players if that's in your game and you're Paolo Di Canio and you do stuff like yeah. that anyway yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you're just going to start showboating when you're three or four yeah, anyone, yeah. anyone can do it then yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's, do you know what Trev you're way too nice like just reminded me of a story I was doing my coaching badges in Tampa right and you know I like to think of myself as a, a nice guy and man, man of the people but um, so you go off and you do like you get your little team so I had these 15 year old American kids right who kindly come and was gonna you know be my team for the day so I can coach them and show that I can coach so I did it and then we've gone through all my tactics I was up all night doing everything all right and it got to the game was 1-1 one, one. and I'm at the sideline I'm being filmed yeah and I'm screaming at this lad this centre half because he ducked out of a header like <laughs> and, he's, and, then he, and he's looked at me and I've got fucking head the fucking go for it like that. so the, the kid's like panicked like he's the ball's gone up he's gone up for this header and he's just hit this geezer's elbow and the noise he Ooh. must have broke his nose the poor kid Oof. like harpooned on the floor I had his He's um, coach running on, and I just felt, what have you become? I've just like, <laughs> <laughs> like, just like, because I wanted to win this game so but yeah. much. I've made this kid yeah. so committed. <clears throat> his bugle was probably going to be pointing that way <laughs> for the rest of his life. Bad and it was just like, do you know what I mean? But once the competitive juices come in, yeah. it's just like, it takes over, doesn't it? And I was like, as soon as I saw him on the floor with bleeding nose, I was like, oh, I feel so bad for him. I was like, his mum was on the side. Oh, is, he, is he all right? No. <laughs> <laughs> what kid, man? Bad man, Joe. Is assassin. It, the weird thing, though, isn't it, with that competitive nature? Yeah. Because it's like, if I watched you on the pitch, Trev, I, I, you'd never have known that you didn't. And, it, you know, it's sort of like, I think it, it's a lovely thing to hear. As like, that, yeah. you know, that you are like that. I, cause I've got, you know, any football team I play for, we're like, fucking useless. Do you know what I mean? I play for a Sunday <laughs> league team. Like, genuinely... Like you go, why are we fucking doing this? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you both sit there going, oh yeah, yeah, we got beaten. What, yeah, we used to turn up and you, you could see, like, yo, know, I mean, it was a piss up, but you would genuinely think, what is the point? We could just go to the pub. <laughs> We'd be doing that anyway. We just put ourselves an absolute beast in. You know, like, I've come to the point where you're sort of phoning up people who've never played football because no one, you can't even make 11 players anymore. Yeah. So you're phoning up your cousin going, <laughs> yeah. I know you've never played football, but do you fancy coming down and making it? Like, oh, what is the point in this? What an absolute... Yeah, but is that, not, is that not football, though? We just, yeah. we're, all, we're all at different levels, but we all love the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. And, I, you know, I think as well as a funny thing of being like, you know, you both have played at the top, top, top level, right? I could go away going, do you know what? God, I, I touched the ball three times and I think you give it away. Like the smallest <laughs> little thing yeah, yeah. becomes the biggest <laughs> thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, it's just... I soccer suppose Raid, it's... Tom. We're training yeah. you up for Soccer Raid, mate. You're going to look like a, a young Diego Costa at that front. Oh, <laughs> Terrorising. He's got the you got... He had the beard, didn't he? He had the beard. I don't even talk about it. I was genuinely hoping Diego Costa was coming to West Ham. Uh, that mm. was my thing. All transfer window was just like... Oh, I think okay. his legs have gone big, man. Mm. I don't think... I think you've dodged a bullet there. I watched really? him the other day a few times. He looks... I know like he's one of them at times in his career. He's looked heavy and when he's disinterested and then he just sparks into life and gets 10, 10 in 10. But I think he's... I, yeah, I, I, I don't think that would have ended well. I think West Ham... As long as they got someone to... If Ant they have to manage Antonio from now to the end of the season to get through, they can, they can, they can do something... Just can't lose yeah. Antonio because he's so so important. Look, moving on to Kaka Talk West Ham all day for you, Trev, because generally you're <laughs> one of the favourite people on, on social media. Talk. Thank you, sir. But moving on to literally one of, I mean, Joe's dying to talk about this. So every week we have a section of the show called What Really Happened. We ask the listeners to pick a moment from your career oh, and we shit. do a deep dive. So we're going to go there. It's 1997, FA Cup, QPR Barnsley. The ball comes over from the right. Oof. You're outside the box, you're back to goal and bam. Trevor Sinclair scores arguably one of the greatest goals of all time. Look at and Jeffrey, oh, Jeffrey. Oh, no, oh, listen, you feel oh. so uncomfortable with all that. Hold place. up, hold up. No that mention, of, no mention Joe, no, of the dreadlocks. Joe, no, 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 let me just say quickly, that Trevor's like, yeah, a little bit like uneasy with that phrase. Joe, if I turn around and go, Joe did this, Joe's like, yeah, 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 yeah especially it, mate. <laughs> oh, the dear. compliment sponge. Yeah. Uh, listen, I was just... Listen, the dreadlocks, it's all about the... Because he yeah, was the flying through the air. They're the little dreadlocks, one of them blonde. 
<laughs> like, and then he, the celebration was just, ah, oh, it was on point. I, lo- I loved it. Yeah. I, was just, I was watching it at school. And then two wow. years later, I was playing with him. Yeah, like, that's, that's how mad, mad it was. Yeah. Like, for, that's how quick it is for all them youngsters out there. I remember how the goal like it was yesterday. It, yeah. yeah. Yeah, listen, it was, Tom, thank you for that. It was, um, it, it is great. And like, Joe, I remember Joe for many things, but especially that goal he scored for England in the Euros. Was it the Euros? 2000, World, Cup, 2000, World Cup. World Cup 2006. See, 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 just quickly, let's point it, case in point. Trevor, that's a great goal. You're like, oh, thank you, Tom. Uh, Trevor's like, I remember that goal you scored. Was it your World Cup, mate? World Cup, get it right. <laughs> bigger stage, far bigger yeah. stage, Trev. But, but, but the thing is, <laughs> I mean, that, just talking about the, the, uh, the way that I celebrated, that was energy, wasn't it? I don't even oh. know. I just went absolutely hysterical because, you know what, it's one of them things and, and Joe will probably say, he'll back me up on this, hopefully. In training, from when I'd been about, I remember doing it when I was like under 10s, playing for yeah. Berry Boys. It's something that, it's not something that I practice. It's something that, if the ball's slightly behind me coming in from the right, I'm mm. having a go at this. Because for whatever reason, my timing was right, my athleticism right, the connection I usually got in and around right. And I do it in training all the time. So it wasn't, I think the biggest surprise for me was that it, it happened from so far out and... The, the, the actual trajectory of the ball because I probably don't usually take it on board if it's that if it's more of a drill ball it's easier to calculate where it's coming in and when to get yourself up and over but for some reason I thought I'm having this I must have I must have been out the night before or something and still half cut but um, it was it was just one of them where you know when you play golf and you're at the sweet spot yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. happen very often for me but when I do I feel, it feels lovely it was like that it felt lovely and to see it nestling the top of the goal it was it, yeah it was a really good moment and it's nice to be you know like even 20 whatever year it, yeah. years ago it was it's nice to be remembered for such a sensational pe- goal to be honest i bet people still come up to you and talk about it, trev all of day course. long joe yeah all day, that's the first thing like especially strangers but yeah. even like people who know me trev, talk us through that goal and it's like seriously behave yourself but then like, just talking because i mean i can't you talking about great great amazing goals i can't you can't talk about them and then not talk about and talking about Paolo, is that, is that goal as well. Oh. You know, I've got a story about that, right? I nearly didn't get into the ground that day. This is, a, this is, a, so if you, I'll do it, I'll mug myself here. I didn't, puffer jackets, I had a shot, do you remember shot puffer jackets? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had a shot puffer jacket, right? And I, I got caught in the oh, turnstiles. What, what, what colour? What colour first? I need to imagine. Like a black this. one. It was a black one. I was hoping it was right. orange, but go on crack on. <laughs> I got caught in the turnstiles, right? Oh, shit. And I was carrying a bit of timber at the time. <laughs> I get caught in the turnstiles coming through, right? And there's a queue of people. Obviously, everyone's trying to get in. I've been in the pub before, so I had a couple of drinks. Left it a bit late to get into the grad. People are <laughs> pushing, going like... And I remember my old man going, get through. And then my dad starts rinsing me, going, um, here we go. Uh, Wimbledon West Ham is a delayed <laughs> kickoff for years. But this, so this is before I was ever doing what I'm doing now. For years, people would come up to me at Upton Park or in a pub and whatever and say, Walk past and go, You were that prick who got caught in the return start. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. Um, Gosh. Well, but I, I was there to see that. Yeah. And what, I, what was going through your mind at that moment? <clears throat> we were, listen, we were a good team, weren't we, Joe? You know, the players that we had and, and Matt Vivian Foley, God bless him. Um, yeah. I just remember receiving the ball. That's something that I, listen, it, defend, at the time I was still, I, I kind of got over my injury from my knee injury that I got a QPR. I was starting to get that explosive pace back and, and defenders didn't want to come in. So rather than me going and running out of space and, and kind of open the gates and it going out on the byline, I started to kind of evolve my game and adapt my game a little bit where if they were off me three or four yards because they didn't want to encroach into that space and give me the chance to get wrong side of them, I started using that ball. It's a bit of a diagonal. And uh, Paolo, you know, Paolo was a brilliant pro and his pre-game chat, he'd say about different movements. And this is what I say when I'm coaching now to kids. So if you're a left back and the left wing is there, have a chat with each other. What's the movement you're going to do? If, he's, if the fullback's tight up, yeah, look, as I get it out of my feet, spin. and I'll put, So things. So Paolo would do this all the time. And Paolo said, if you get the ball and it looks congested in the right, put it over so I'll step in and just come away from it. And it's exactly what he did. And I, I mean, come on. That, yeah. I mean, the ball was all right. The finish. I, like, I look at my overhead kick and think, I can do that. That's something I can get my head around and, and do, do the equation and bang. Yeah, so yeah. I cannot get my head around no. Paolo did that because I'd end up doing myself, try, no. attempting yeah, yeah, yeah. it. 
and he and again he did it in training, didn't he? Trip yeah. that he had yeah. that like his right trip like that's such a unique technique that mm. he had like the, the, to lift off the floor with and 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 volley it while you're in mid air like a scissor it like bang yes. outside and get that. He did it in training, and and of course he did. I've played with some great players, technical players, some some of the greatest of the games, but that one thing I've never seen anyone do it like Paolo. He did it in training multiple times. It was yeah. a joke. I mean, not for as far ca- away as that. It was yeah, a joke. But to, on the angle to catch it is perfectly yeah. dear, straight yeah. into the stanchion. And I think even I mean we've not got this kind of calmness about us because we just go yeah do lally. But he's calmness afterwards. I, I know. I, we celebrated. It was just, it's just Paolo, man. He was a complete maverick, complete entertainer. Do you know what? Yeah. I, tell you, I don't know if I've told anyone this, but he used to like, you know, he's, he's in his accent. He used to call me bastard all the time. <laughs> 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 so, hello, ba- hello. Ba- I'm not I sound Welsh here. Hey, bastard. Hello, <laughs> bastard. How are you, right? And then I didn't see him for like, because I was always a kid to him. Do you know what I mean? He was the yeah. main man and I, like, I, I loved him and he helped me, blah, blah, blah. But he used to always call me bastard. And then I see him about 15 years later at Noble's testimonial. And I thought, I oh, might call me by my name now. No, he still called me bastard. <laughs> <laughs> what did yeah. he call you that? I don't uh, know. Just like, he just weird, wasn't he? Like, like he wasn't, he didn't like me or anything. I didn't think he did. He was just, just a peculiar guy. Yeah, like, just, different just body, a strange different. geezer. Like, I love, I love bastard. I love, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I like the fact that he's like, he also had to tell a story and go, yeah, I saw that Joe Cole 15 a, years <laughs> later. Still not getting a hint. <laughs> Joe, yeah. do you remember? Do you remember? Obviously, you remember Kits, but do you remember Kits's marquee move? The toe punt. Nah, when he the let volley. Come. Oh, the it's volley. Class, yes. Wasn't it? Yeah. He had two marquee moves: the volley and the toe punt. Yeah. Kits. It was a yeah. joke. We had we had some unusual footballers at that club yeah. at that time. We just had just um, skills like Paolo could do that. Kits's volume was a yeah. joke. Yeah. yeah. You're watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Listen, Alan, you're welcome to come down and have a run out. We only play nine a side now, so and it's it's an age range from um we've got some lads that are in their sixties playing down to like oh, uh, careful. <laughs> All right, don't get yeah. too excited. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the full video now to find out why Rob is Alan's first winner. Moving to England in 2002. Because that was a mad one for you, right, Trev? Because as you said earlier, I think you mentioned it, you went as a 24th player. You ended up being like, one of England's best players at that World Cup as well. You were, you were, you know, I think you played, what did you play, four games? You played against four Brazil, games, right? Yeah. yeah, I missed it. Well, it was, it was hard, Tom, because when we first went to Dubai and there was like maybe five or six on top of the, the 23 that you expected to get picked. Yeah. And then when we went on to South Korea, there was 24. I was the 20. I, everyone else had been named in the squad, but I was the one that Sven wanted to take along, but I wasn't in the squad. So I, it was weird because I was still playing in the friendlies, but I didn't feel part of it. And it was like a unique situation to be in. And I hope mm. that they, they wouldn't do that in the, like from there on in. Because I, I did tell um, Adam Crozier, who was the chief exec at the time, and... Um, Sven that I didn't feel comfortable like so I went out there for a bit you know felt like you know third third wheel kind of thing and then eventually I think I played against South Korea in a warm-up game and had a bit of a stinker and I just said listen it's affecting me I don't feel part of the group although I'm still getting you know caps and whatnot I'm, if no one gets injured I'm going to be I'm going to be sent home or whatever can I go home to Chadwell Leaf which obviously as you know was the West Ham training ground I'll train every day and if anyone gets injured and you feel like you want to invite me back out, I'll be fit and ready to go. So I did that. And Adam was really understanding. So was Sven. And, um, got home, had a, had a little recharge, little roll around with the missus. And by the time I got back, it was time to go back out because Danny Murphy got injured. And then I felt I felt part of it. You know what I mean? You feel yeah, part yeah, of the, the yeah. 23-man click. And yeah, I missed the first game, Sweden. And you, as always, we've had problems on the left, which means Joe have... Put, been put in that position for England and uh, the second game against Arden see about 15 minutes in Owen Greaves gets injured and um, Steve McLaren waved me over and like as he waved to me I'm like I'm looking behind thinking <laughs> where's Kieran or whoever it was or Joe and um, it was me and uh, yeah I went on I was absolutely shitting myself and I was, like the thing I'd seen the flag because I was thinking oh, I'm going to enjoy this thinking I'm not going to play Look at that horn church in Manchester yeah. and there, all the flags. And I was thinking, this is, the roof was on. I was thinking, this is the bollocks. And then I was coming on, I thought, 
the only thing I could think of, do not let your country down. I was shitting myself. <laughs> but I don't think I had enough time to properly shit myself. So I got on, I was straight into the action. And I think I started laying it off to Scholes, who spun in behind, uh, got a little bit of the better of the fullback. And uh, from there on in, I kind of grew in confidence. And yeah, it was, a, it was one of the, probably the highlights of my whole career representing England at that, yeah. that World Cup. And we did okay to get, to get beat off Brazil in the quarters. And uh, they obviously they went on to win it. It was a, yeah, it was a, it was a highlight of my career. We were 1-0 up right in that game. Yeah. Yeah, it was going to plan. Going to plan. Yeah. And then um, just before half time, um, yeah, Rivaldo, well Rivaldo scored. I still, like, Joe, do you have nightmares? Because I remember they played in blue and he took his blue jersey off and he had a banana yellow vest on. I still have nightmares <laughs> about that vision. <laughs> <laughs> What was the level like though there when you're playing? Because that for me was a that was a top Brazilian side, right? That was a very good Brazilian, you know. I mean, and we, we bet we were arguably the first half we played, as you say, we was going to plan. Was it? We, I mean, proper pinch yourself stuff, obviously. But what, what, was it? What's it like being out there with like Ronaldinho, Rivaldo, and all these guys? Yeah, it was. Listen, it was. A, you could tell the level was up, um, and I think it was more obvious when they went down to ten men and we were chasing the game and we still couldn't get. A handle on the ball they just kept possession yeah. and I think it just shows that I don't know the way they're coached you know to have that ability if you're in a tight spot and you can't get a pass off to drop a shoulder even if you're a fullback or a centre half I think we're getting there with our E triple P and the way that we coach kids yeah. and we, we teach them how to handle the ball a lot better and even now like you look at centre halves coming through even in the lower divisions they can all play and step in and all the rest of it I think we were just a little bit behind them at the time even though we had good central defenders at the time, but I think we were just a bit behind them overall. Yeah. Um, and they were the better team, but you know, the players that you're playing against, Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, up front, they're front three. And it's like, yeah. I was watching them thinking, mm. wow, they're amazing. You know, yeah. R9 was apps. And he probably were at his best at the time. You know what I mean? He, yeah. He, yeah. He, he'd had his injuries, but still that name, the gravity that them three names carried and the fear that they took to any opposition that they were facing was uh, in, insane. Yeah, T tactically and technically, most of the, the major countries in Europe were ahead of us, I think now. Looking back now with hindsight, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. the way we was brought up to play football and the way there's still some elements of it in the Premier League today, but it's being phased out, it, a, a tiny elements of it in the Premier League today. But you should, the whole Premier League was 4-4-2, get the ball forward, get into shape. It was all about what you can do off the ball. And how, mm. you know, no, no, no worried about, you know, players who can receive it in all sorts of pressure, play through the lines like like it is now. So yeah. looking back now, we, we was let down. Not we was let down. Our country just fell behind. And uh, from the sort of late 80s, early 90s, and we just were stagnated and we didn't develop. And then all of a sudden, I'd, I'd, I'd go and play for England throughout my career. And m I think majority games we won... But we play against some teams and they just pop us off the park. And then I'd go, right, well, you play in the championship. You're in the Polish second division. You're in uh, Ukraine. And I'm like, you, you. Uh, and when you see them individually, they wasn't great players. But because they've been coached collectively to play this possession football and to knock it about and pass it, like the, what we do now, like what's second nature when you've got mm. John Stones, Harry Maguire, you know, the, you know, Foden, Mount, like we're producing these players now. That's why I'm so excited for the tournament because... We've caught, we've caught up, and I think maybe there's an argument because of the natural talent and the athleticism in our squad, we might have gone above a few of these countries. Yeah. And I think now's our, now's our time to do it. And I just think, looking back now, we were just a little bit behind Trev, weren't we, in, in that tactical way. I think that, especially when you're talking about patterns of play and, and, yeah. and having a, a clear identity of how you want to play you know, at all costs. So yeah. you, you look at Pep and you think, or you look at Klopp, they're not going to change their philosophies. Just no. for yeah. a certain game, They're, Klopp's going to press. He's going to try yeah. and squeeze the life out of the pitch. The starting mm. position from the keeper is going to be good. He's going to be ready to clean the yeah. little cup over the top. And you stick to task. No one's going to come off that. You look yeah. at Pep. It doesn't matter if it's the keeper who's got the ball. You'll mm. have a, you'll have a centre half on the byline there. Centre half mm. on the byline. Someone will be rotating to receive it in the middle. Yeah. You'll have yeah. your fullbacks quite. They've got a lot. He's not. And if you do do really well against him, they've usually got a striker who's rapid. Mm where Edison will just go bump and he'll be in on yeah. one pass. So yeah. it, it can evolve, but he'll stick to his principles and he'll stick to that. Yeah. I think both of them two play, both of them two managers, I think they're pushing, bringing our game up to scratch. And that's yeah. why 
because we're getting the top coaches here now, that's what I feel is mm. going to benefit the national team even more. Yeah, no, 100%. So my last question, just on that, that goal by Ronaldinho. Oh. And we, Trev, you're the guy, you're the guy with these goals. <laughs> Did he mean it? Yeah, I don't think so. I really don't. I don't think he meant it. If, he, if, he, if he's saying he meant it, then fair play, because I don't think he can question that brilliance that he had and mm. what an entertainer he, he was. Oh, you know, yeah. He probably mm. won't get mentioned too much about the best players in the world and uh, that have ever played the game, but talking about entertainment. Mm. Whoa, yeah. He had swag before yeah. we even used the word yeah, swag. Yeah, he I was know. amazing. Changed the game. Yeah, Changed amazing game. to watch. I mean, even when he used to do that little stealthy back control mm. instead of his chest, yeah. he was just, he loved football. Big, yeah. You can just see his big smile now. So, yeah, obviously to share to share the uh, platform with him in the quarterfinals was amazing, but I don't think he meant that goal. And if he did, Joe? he's on another level to me. No, I agree. I, I don't think he meant it. I, I, and again, he's a plea. He was, do you know what, what Trev, he, he was built like, Trev was a strong, yeah. fast, yeah. Like, but Ronaldinho had Trev's strength. You know, we're talking about the arse, Trev's arse earlier yeah. on in the thing. Ronaldinho had that, I went to tackle him once yeah, at Barcelona. No, but I went to I went to, tack, I went to tackle him at Barca, and it was like I'd, I'd run into Michael Essien. Like he's that kind of level of strength. Mm. Yeah, he was an unbelievable player. He changed the game. Well, yeah, he, yeah. Didn't, he didn't mean that goal. No chance. And by the way, David Seaman gets a lot of stick, but he was brilliant in 2002. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was incredible. Remember, against Amazing Nigeria, in that game against, against Argentina and as well. He was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he was brilliant. So, yeah. No, another one. Another dagger in my heart. Yeah. Tom, remind me of all of them today. You are a big man. <laughs> right, let's move on. We're going to talk about the big game this weekend. Uh, and Trev, you've, 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 you've created a bit of a storm here, haven't you, for this City-Liverpool thing on social media. I well, mean, do you disagree, Tom? No, I, I sort of do and I don't. So here's how I sit. I sort of, I get where you're coming from. Let's explain what you say, what you said first, and then we So can, basically yeah. what I'm saying is the last three, four years... I think Manchester City and, and Liverpool have the, been the biggest rivals in England. You know, I know Chelsea and Arsenal or Chelsea yeah. and Man U or Ch even Ch Chelsea and Liverpool have got a good rivalry over the years. Uh, Manchester United against Arsenal. You know, there's been some rivalries through time and I think this evolves. Yeah. It cycles. Yeah. In the last three years, the biggest rivalry in English football is 100% been Liverpool and Manchester City. One, you look at the... Both performances, they're both in first or second. But two, you look at other things that have gone on within them games. I mean, I don't think that Liverpool have lost to Manchester City at Anfield since 2003. Yeah. So, I, so there's, a, there's a lot of history there. You look at what they did to the Manchester City coach a couple of years back. There's, there's a there's a dis. Yeah, there's yeah. A, I wouldn't say there's a hatred. There's a dislike. Um, yeah. And it, it, yeah, it would probably fringing on hatred from the Manchester City fans just because Manchester and Liverpool's relationship isn't great. But I just feel the fact that they went and nearly did it in 2018-19 and we beat them by a point, again, that just adds to that rivalry. Last year, they blew us away. Liverpool was superb. And again, this year, I think it's between whoever finishes above Liverpool or Manchester City won the league for me. So I yeah. think that rivalry has superseded anything that's gone before it, as in for now. Listen, I look back and I, I know the Arsenal and, and Man United had it back in the day or yeah, Liverpool yeah. in their days. But now, in the last three years, the biggest rivalry in English football is definitely Liverpool Manchester City for me. I, I think, I, I mean, and I'll make you right on, on, on the basis where you say now. That, I suppose that's the thing, isn't it? Because that's ever changing. Of course, you're going back a couple of years. Yeah. We've talked about on this podcast <clears> when <throat> we had Jermaine, when Jermaine was on um, and Joe and, you know, that Liverpool Chelsea rivalry, mm. you go back to Arsenal Man United. A couple of years ago, it, you know, it's sort of, uh, I suppose, Tottenham sort of a fly in there, sort of. But I suppose it's the thing is, the real hatred of that Manchester United and City thing is, that's the, the thing that supersedes that, because that goes back. It's like Tottenham and Chelsea loathe each other. Arsenal yeah, and Chelsea I think, it, each I think, there's, I think it's, it's got more history. But I think if you yeah. look at, if you ask, like, I think the most people who replied, I've looked at a couple of replies. Uh, which Don't do not, that. It's not very Don't pleasant. Do that. <laughs> it's not no, very pleasant. No. But... The majority of them are Man United fans, and it's a, it's a, it's a lack of acceptance that they're not the, one of the main teams in England this, at, at the moment. Yeah. And although the size of the club is, of course we know Manchester United, yeah. you know, they yeah. turn over so much money, but actually they're they're not they're not they've not been challenging for the title for a long time. And I think it, that's a realization that they don't want to accept, and that's why there's so much rhetoric from Manchester United fans about that that message that I put out. But you, you know what? And I put a lot of teams and West Ham in, in, included in this. If they get their, their starting 11 right, everyone's fit. We can all compete with anyone. 
Mm, yeah. Like Southampton last night, one, they had a few kids playing anyway. And on top yeah. of because of because of um, regular games of be, having to be played because of the season that we're having every three days. So you're getting yeah. muscular injuries, you're having to rest players who potentially could get injured. But on top of that, sending off in two minutes. Yeah. It's just a tough one. To, that's not that that it that doesn't represent Southampton. Mm. So your no, mates no, no. will say that. That that doesn't yeah. so but Manchester United took full advantage of that and they played really well. And you know, to go in what was it, four 0 at half time and then to crack on again with the second sending off as well. It all affects the, the final performance and result. But listen, Southampton, when everyone's fit, Southampton will compete with Manchester United. Simple as that. But that's uh, you make another interesting thing there that I was because you know, it's a sort of away from it, but this muscular thing of like how that's having an impact. Like a couple of games ago, I'm watching Arsenal and I'm like, wow, Tierney, Saka, these kids are looking, Arsenal look another level. Mm. Tierney's not got a serious injury. It's just overplaying now, right? From yeah. what I've read. And then, so so it's a weird thing of it. It's essentially going to be, who's got the best squad? As silly as that sounds. Because your top 11 is one thing. Obviously, it's a squad-based game. Mm. But be, being able to bring in, you know, for, you know, you think of City now and you yeah. think City can, without, you know, probably lacking... Aguero being there, but even with De Bruyne gone, mm-hmm. you're not watching yeah. him now. De Bruyne is, for me, maybe the best player in the league. I think De Bruyne is up there with, you know, best players in the world. But yeah. You know, yeah. I watch City now. I'm not like, oh, you know, oh, where's, where's De Bruyne? I'm watching City thinking, it doesn't seem like Foden stepped in. I mean, I, mm. I think, by the way, Foden is mm. just... He's um, muscled, isn't he? Like, He's muscled, oh, really. mate. Oh, mm. I mean, you talk about exciting prospects. That kid... Yo, he has to play to, for England. He has yeah. to, he has oh, to mate, he get is. him in an England shirt and get <clears> him in and play him and just let him, because he's he's so good. And amongst others, but he's so good. But getting back to your thing, Tom, about the muscle injuries, right? So, yes, he's going to be down to uh, s- squad strength and people like Southampton and West Ham to a certain degree, if they get a few injuries in key positions... They can come unstuck. But this, this this always points to the direction, though, Tom, who's got the best squad. And I think for me, yeah. you look at every position, apart from central centre-forward, which Manchester City have struggled in, and Jesse mm. is still a little bit underwhelming for me and he's not getting the record goals-wise. If you look at any position at Manchester City, they've got cover. Yeah. And the cover that comes in is That's almost, why they're winning. like they're competing for that position. Yeah. So it, it doesn't. sometimes you think, well, who's the, who's the, who's the right-back? Is it is it Walker? Or is it Cancelo? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. you even like you look at Laporte, he's gone in at centre half. Yeah. And yeah. I know Diaz is the main man and he's been brilliant, but Laporte's gone in there and all of a sudden he looks just as good. Yeah. So yeah. maybe Diaz, you know, you could say, but even Stefan, you look at Edison, Stefan played a few games in the cups and whatnot. He looks calmer than Edison on the ball with the yeah, ball yeah, at his feet. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. wow. So I think when you look at the squad, that's why I probably would say Manchester City are favourites to win the league just because of their squad depth. There was people questioning Pep the last yeah, yeah, yeah. year, 18 months, right? Okay, so right, so so you've gone for Man City have gone for structure, consistency, um, not not hasty decisions. And now they're probably, in my opinion, going to be blessed with more trophies. They've won trophies consistently over the year. You know, and I go to you know my other team, Chelsea, and, and I look at get, after getting rid of Frank. I know we addressed it last week, but when you you're hopping from manager to manager, players coming in from the cold. Everyone at Man City knows Pep's the governor and yeah. they know where the club's going. They, the, the, everyone who's signing players for them knows what type of players they've got to get to bring in, the, down to pro, the probably the people that are bringing the players in that they know where they're going to live. You know, It just sends me like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I'm going to throw a big comment out. If Liverpool win the league this year, it's arguably as big of achievement from a championship winning side because of all the troubles that they've had all through season. If they do that, Jurgen Klopp, I tip my hat to him, it's the biggest achievement from a Premier League manager to win it when his squad's been decimated like that and keep the momentum. But for Man City, I just so I've got so much admiration for the way that the club's run mm. from the structure around it. And and I personally think they'll go and dom I didn't think this would happen, but I think they'll dom that they could dominate you know, as the years go on, because if they get Haaland, big man, game over. This is a Man City side that are playing incredible football. They look, the confidence is up. They've got a bit of pump about them. So, so for you both, who essentially who's going to win? That's what I was going to say. Liverpool can beat anyone on the day. And that's why they mm. won the Champions League, because they were, for me, a, a, a cup side, a team mm. that could go into any game on the particular night or day and win that game. 
nothing changes. They're at home at Anfield. They know they've got to be up for the game against Manchester City because of the form that Manchester City are taking into that game. Yeah. And if they defend better than what they have, I mean, I think they defended pretty well against West Ham, but if they defend better and continue to improve, who knows, this, this new boy Ben Davis or the lad that they've brought in from Schalke might be the bee's knees. If mm. they defend better, you know, Trent's been a little bit off it, but they'll know everything's riding on this game if they want to defend their championship. And uh, yeah, it's a massive mm. game. I wouldn't like to bet on it. I don't bet anyway, but even if I did, I wouldn't know which way to bet on this one. Well, you haven't got to bet any money. But what we did, we are going to ask. We're going to do a little <laughs> bit of predictions. Because let me say, say Tom, go on, mate. that was seamless. The way you just took that straight into the next He's session. You know what that is? I'll tell you what that is, Joe. That is me. That's my version of a scissor kick from nearly the halfway line. Yeah, mate. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Listen. Do they do podcast I, awards? <laughs> they do, Joe. Are uh, right. Joe. All right. we up from well, Mate, I'll tell you what, that's why, that's why I'm doing one with you, mate. You're Mr. Silverware. <laughs> well, if, the, uh, if there's a party for that after lockdown, I'll Trim. come to the party. We're oh, going to get you, 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 Colton Palmer, Andy oh, Cole, no. Bridgie, Colton, what, Colton, a, Colton, what CP, a motley man. crew. Wow. Colton, Colton, Colton Cole's party, captain, now. man. He's that'll captain be a quiet, the party That'll be a quiet bus. table. Oh, mate, quiet imagine table. that. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm right, so excited listen. for that. I'm going to revel in a little bit of a claim here. Last week, Joe... Yeah. I had two right. And I, I called it United Arsenal draw. Yeah. Leeds to beat Leicester. I got West Ham. I thought West Ham were going to beat Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. I, that was with my heart a bit. You got none right again. Oh, <laughs> Joseph. Mate. Right. I'm horrendous at this. I think this is, I arguably think this is the hardest week of predicting scores since we've started right. this podcast. So, first up, we're going to go Villa Arsenal. Villa. I don't, Oh, Ooh. my guy. Joe, don't copy, remember? They've got well, a better, go- no, 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 got no. A better goalkeeper, Emmy Martinez. <laughs> oh. um, draw, draw. Draw. I'm, I'm going to go Villa as well. Okay. I think, yeah, I just think they're, they're flying. Okay, next up, Trev. Wolves Good. versus Leicester. I'm going to go Wolves. I just think the new man they, they brought in, I watched him the other yeah. day, Willie and Jose. Yeah. Decent, good technique. I mean, you can't leave, it's, that's, that's the Premier League this season. A couple of weeks ago, you're going Leicester all day long. Yeah, and I was now, at the West Brom game. They were poor. Two for yeah, so forward. The Leeds against Leeds. You know, you see, that's what I mean. Like, well, all that's of a sudden, one player. One player. No, 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 no. That's two yeah. players. Ndidi and Vardy, crucial. Ndidi's mm. a hell of a player. He didn't, did he yeah, not, yeah. He didn't play against Leeds. His are limbs you, no. are a joke. Mate, he has got he, the longest legs ever. If you're I, can't man, if, fe- I can't believe I how effective he is. No, mate, mate, yeah, I'm telling you, he, he's a top four player, no doubt. He, yeah. he needs to, you know, he, he'll be snapped up. So, Joe, who are you going to go with? Um, I'm going to sit, I want to sit on the fence. I'm going to say a draw again, only because I want to win. No, 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 because I want to win. <laughs> no, I want to win. <laughs> yeah. Mate, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with, I'm with Trev again. I'm going to go Wolves. I'm going to go Wolves now. Right, finally, the big one. Liverpool, Man City. Trev. Man City. Man City. <laughs> okay, um, Joe's jumped in. Man City. <laughs> you know what? Um, I'll take a draw. I, I, I think it might be a draw. I just think they, they might be a bit more solid at the back. I think without Aguero, I think he's back in training, but I don't think he's going to play. Um, I don't think we'll lose, but I think if we go there and, and draw... I think that would be a decent result. So, Pet, yeah, I'm gonna, Pet, I'm gonna don't go play for, for draws, Trev. No, I know don't, don't play, play for draws. I just don't think, I'm not sure they've got enough going forward, if I'm, if I'm being honest, um, against yeah. the Liverpool side, if they are defending well. So, I'm going to go draw. I want to go Liverpool. You, you, know, you know, these big games that we've seen a few of them recently, they have been absolute two yeah, They've been I know, so yeah. boring. And I've got, a feeling, yeah. I've got a feeling it, it's going to follow suit. Mm. I, I think your game of the week. Weekend, it will arguably, I think, will be Wolves. I think Wolves Leicester will be a cracking game. Mm. Like, I look at that and think, so I'm with you, Trevor. I've, I sometimes watch those big games and it, they flat. I, I'm always terrible. I have a little bet and I think I was going to be over this amount of goals. It's going to, this is going to, because you're always hoping, right? We're you're just always feeding hoping. the bookmaker. We're feeding it's the bookmaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my own little back doing this podcast. We're getting a little bit back here. We're getting a little bit back for the masses. Trevor. It's been an honour, mate. It's oh, been great having you on. You're Thank a you very much, man. You, man. Really enjoyed honestly. working with you. I love, obviously, love you, Joe. Fingers crossed. Trevor, mate, it's been, honestly, I, we could do a whole series of you. You're a G, man. <laughs> Thank it's you, been bro. A, I appreciate no, that, mate. Tough. Tough, it. Tough, it. Man. Great, great to see show. you, mate. Yeah, great you too, to see bro. you.
We'll ask you again. All right, Let's look forward to a pipe when this is done. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you. That was an amazing chat to Mr. Trevor Sinclair. You've been listening to All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Me and JC will be back next week. You've been watching All to Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.